again. Jesse, what do you say to your friends? Freezing lake is steaming. It's so cold. Season's going to end on a double doink. Do I think justice will serve? No. How dare him? I want to announce my retirement today. No harm will come to this gator. What do you want to say to your fans? Mr. Kelly took advantage of his position to prey on vulnerable minors. Mr. Johnson failed the hardworking members of the Chicago Police Department. As killers have been brought to justice, I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I believe the system works. Let it shine. Let it shine. Thank you very much. God bless. Chicago. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm Corey McFerrin. And I'm Don Hasbrook. It has been a year of scandals, attention-grabbing headlines, and historic moments here in Chicago. And topping our year in review, the stunning case surrounding actor Jesse Smollett that shocked the nation. It all started when Smollett claimed to be attacked by two white men in Streeterville, but then the story took two dramatic turns. Sally Schulze has details. Do I think justice will serve? No. Chicago's police superintendent blindsided and bristling with anger after learning CPD's case against Jesse Smollett will never go to trial. If you want to say you're innocent of a situation, then you take your day in court. I would never, if someone falsely accused me, I would never hide behind a brokered deal and secrecy. Period. Both Eddie Johnson and Mayor Rahm Emanuel were celebrating new police officers at Navy Pier when the latest plot twist hit. They learned of the dropped charges the same time the public did. This is without a doubt a whitewash of justice and sends a clear message that if you're in a position of influence, and power, you'll get treated one way, other people will be treated another way. The mayor repeatedly highlighted that this wasn't just a police case against Smollett, a grand jury indicted him too. Police say they had a rock solid case against this actor ready for trial. Mr. Smollett is still saying that he is innocent, still running down the Chicago Police Department. How dare him? How dare him? With the backdrop of hundreds of new officers vowing to uphold the law, the mayor slammed Smollett for using hate crime laws. Chicago police tell me they had not yet disclosed about 80% of the evidence against Smollett. Sally Schulze, Fox 32 News. Protests across Chicago after the sentencing of former CPD officer Jason Van Dyke. Van Dyke was convicted of killing Laquan McDonald after shooting him in 2014. Larry Ellen takes us to the courtroom after the world learned Van Dyke would spend more than six years behind bars. Jason Van Dyke's attorneys are calling this sentence a victory, one which came after Van Dyke's own emotional words in court. I had prayed daily for the soul of Laquan McDonald, and it was due to my actions that the McDonald family has suffered and felt pain. It was Jason Van Dyke himself who had the final words for Judge Vincent gone before hearing his sentence. In his brief remarks, he told the judge that the day on which he shot and killed Laquan McDonald was the worst day of his life. As a God-fearing man and father, I will have to live with this the rest of my life, taking this to my grave. When Van Dyke finished, Judge Gaughan took a brief recess, then explained that the law required him to sentence Van Dyke on the more serious second-degree murder charge, not aggravated battery. The sentence was six years, nine months, and because it came on the murder charge, Van Dyke will serve about half, which his attorney says will allow him to return to his family. So we're happy that he does have a, uh, he has the ability to see those two beautiful girls who are uh, tough and brave, and his, his wife, um, he's going to see the better part of their lives. To answer your question, was justice served? Uh, in this case, uh, I believe the system worked. Larry Yellen, Fox 32 News. From one courtroom in Cook County to the next. R&B star R. Kelly found himself in court, arrested once again on sex crime charges. Natalie Bonke has the story.
He's a rock star. He doesn't have to have non-consensual steps. Defense attorney Steve Greenberg proclaiming his client's innocence, responding to the allegations laid out against Robert Kelly described in bond court this afternoon. Kelly's charged with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse against four victims, at least three of them allegedly younger than 17 years old. Kelly standing in court, hands behind his back, speaking only to confirm his name as the judge issued him a $1 million bond or $250,000 for each alleged victim. Mr. Greenberg's client is in a fight for his life. Mr. Greenberg needs to pull his head out of his High profile attorney Michael Avenatti representing an alleged victim in the 10 count indictment leading to Kelly's arrest and the parents of Azriel Clary, both of whom say their daughter is being held hostage by Kelly, highlighted in a VH1 docuseries, seen leaving court next to another girl whose parents have claimed the same thing. Avenatti says he turned over a tape to prosecutors allegedly showing Kelly engaged in sex acts with a 14 year old girl. They brought those two young ladies here today for the cameras. State's attorney Kim Fox outlining the disturbing allegations against Kelly stretching from 1998 to 2010. In two of the cases, prosecutors revealing in court today, they've recovered DNA evidence. Semen identified on the shirt of one alleged victim under the age of 17 and from another incident in which Kelly allegedly attempted to force a hairdresser to perform oral sex. The male DNA identified in the semen sample is a match to Robert Kelly's DNA profile. Natalie Bomke, Fox 32 News. One man in the middle of these cases was Eddie Johnson. Chicago's top cop made headlines when he announced he was stepping down. But weeks later, Mayor Lori Lightfoot fired him. It came after Johnson appeared to be asleep in his car. He told the mayor he had a couple of drinks with dinner, but the mayor says Johnson lied to her. The superintendent retired as a lieutenant with the department and will receive a pension. Our coverage of 2019's biggest stories continues with the devastating death of a pregnant teenager and her baby. The story behind Marlene Ochoa Lopez's murder that shocked the nation. Plus, a driver plows into a suburban mall, sending shoppers running for their lives. And Illinois gives the green light for cannabis, the legalization of the drug. Vin and Percanti today. A devastating story from Chicago's southwest side that sent shockwaves across the nation. Marlena Choa Lopez and her unborn baby brutally murdered while trying to get baby supplies. Sally Schulze has the story. This mother and daughter duo face new murder charges in a crime that stunned Chicago and wrecked a local family. It's a tragedy, and the only justice we can get is to see these evil, vicious murderers in jail. 46-year-old Clarissa Figueroa and 24-year-old Desiree Figueroa were already charged with killing Marlon Ochoa Lopez. Now, more than a month after her baby died, prosecutors added charges for his murder, saying little Giovanni Lopez could not survive being cut from his mother's womb. The medical examiner determined that the cause of death was anoxic encephalopathy, which is when the brain tissue is deprived of oxygen. Police say the Figueroa's plotted to steal the baby, with Clarissa Figueroa passing the baby off as her own at Christ Medical Center. The attorney for the baby's father says he received huge hospital bills, still naming the baby Figueroa, not Lopez. To receive a bill for his baby who was murdered that says Figueroa child. What kind of monstrous people are these? Frank Avila also wants additional charges against the elder Figueroa's boyfriend, saying he helped cover up the hospital scheme, and he wants to stop a proposed gag order about this high-profile case. If I'm silenced, many in our community will stand up and speak. The judge denied bond for these two suspects, citing the violent nature of the offense. At the Layton Criminal Courts building, Sally Schulze, Fox 32 News. And now to a mystery that was finally solved in 2019, two years after the disappearance of a University of Illinois Chinese scholar. Her killer is finally behind bars. Brent Christensen will spend the rest of his life in prison for the murder of Ying Ying Zhang. A jury convicted Christensen in June, finding him guilty of killing Zhang in what prosecutors say was his attempt to become a serial killer. Her body was never located, but it is believed to be buried in a landfill. 
A desperate search for a five-year-old Crystal Lake boy ends in devastation. AJ Friend's parents told police they put AJ to bed and that was the last they saw of him. But prosecutors say that's far from the truth. Larry Yellen provided details after investigators recovered the boy's body. Crystal Lake Police and the FBI offered few details regarding the little boy's murder, and they have yet to provide a motive for the killing. It is with heavy heart that the Crystal Lake Police Department reports that we have located what we believe to be the body of Andrew A.J. Friend. Police say the five-year-old's body was discovered in a shallow grave in a field about seven miles from his home. His remains, they say, were wrapped in plastic and were taken to the coroner's office. Police said both parents provided information leading them to the body. Investigators with the Crystal Lake Police Department and the FBI interviewed both the mother, Joanne Cunningham, and the father, Andrew Friend Sr., after information was obtained through a forensic an analysis of cell phone data. Interviews also led to another search of the family's home with police removing a shovel, a child's mattress, and several large bags. Do you know what happened to Andrew? I don't. Both parents have previously denied involvement in the boy's disappearance. Both are charged with murder, but the father is also charged with concealment of a homicide, suggesting police believe he disposed of the body. Corey and Dawn, back to you. Mass shootings have been plaguing the nation from schools to places of worship to department stores. The Chicago area has not escaped the violence. In West Suburban Aurora, an employee opened fire at the Henry Pratt manufacturing plant back in February. The shooting left six people dead, including the gunman. Eleven others were hurt, including five police officers responding to the scene. Police say the gunman started shooting his co-workers just minutes after he was fired. It all ended with officers shooting and killing the shooter during a gunfight. And out of chaos at a Northwest Suburban Mall, a man drives an SUV into the Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg, sending shoppers running for cover. Shockingly, no one was hurt. The suspect, 22-year-old Javier Garcia's rampage, was cut short thanks to bystanders and off-duty police officers who held him until police arrived. Garcia has pleaded not guilty on terrorism charges. His lawyers say he has a mental illness and is not a terrorist. Still to come in our 2019 year in review, Chicago makes history in many ways. You did more than make history. You created a movement for change. The election of the city's first LGBTQ mayor. Plus, a hard fought fight between the union and the city, the compromise between the two sides to end an 11 day teacher strike. You've been chosen you Sunday on Fox. An historic mayoral election in Chicago changing the face of politics. Chicago elected its first openly gay mayor in April. Tia Ewing has the story. Together, we can and will make Chicago a place where your zip code doesn't determine your destiny. And that means we can and we will make our streets, all of our streets, safe again. On the heels of her landslide victory of becoming Chicago's first African-American female mayor, she was met by a crowd of fans. Good morning! Morning! How are you? <laughs> and press. How are you? Congratulations. Oh, thanks so much. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. And it's clear that making the streets of Chicago is her first order of business. Our kids' lives depend upon keeping them safe. And that uh, has to be a fundamental uh, duty and responsibility uh, for me as mayor. And that means that we have, to, we have to continue the hard but necessary work of bridging the divide between the police and the communities that they serve. I know every single day that lives literally depend upon it. In a landslide victory, winning 76% of the vote, it was a gutsy move from the start for the former federal prosecutor. With no big name, she put her hat in the ring to lead the nation's third largest city. When it was all said and done, she was in a runoff with political veteran Tony Preckwinkle, who garnered 20 
26% of the vote. Though they went head to head, in order for the city that sits in Cook County, both Lightfoot and Preckwinkle must and will work together. We both have overlapping jurisdiction, and I think the citizens of, of the city of Chicago, that are also obviously also residents of Cook, um, are going to look to us to be leaders and put the campaign behind us, and I'm determined to do that. Let it shine. Let it shine. Thank you very much. God bless you all, and God bless Chicago. The key word that we heard from constituents is the word change, and already Chicago has certainly changed the history books, electing Lori Lightfoot as the first black woman mayor who is also openly gay. From The Loop, Tia Ewing, Fox 32 News. And now to another history-making moment in Chicago. Hundreds of thousands of teachers walked off the job for 11 days. Athletes, students, and parents were all affected by one of the longest strikes ever for the Chicago Teachers Union. Anthony Ponce has the story. A lot of relief across the city with Chicago Public School teachers and students finally headed back to the classroom. It took a 10-month negotiation, an 11-day teacher strike, and one final big demonstration outside City Hall to make it happen. It was a hard-fought discussion. It took us a lot of time to get there, but I think this is the right thing ultimately for our city, and I'm glad that this phase is over. Mayor Lightfoot calling CTU's next five-year contract historic. It gives teachers 16% raises, puts a nurse and a social worker in every school, and is designed to keep class size under control. You know, we feel like we, we achieved a lot of things. There's some things we didn't achieve, um, but it's, it's, it's not a day for, for uh, photo ops or victory laps. Teachers marched in the snow to make one final push for 11 paid makeup days, one for each day they were out on strike. In the end, the two sides agreed on getting five of those. I refuse to even talk about this in terms of winning or losing. Frankly, given what the hardships that our students and our families have endured, I think that's it's an offensive term. Nobody wins in a circumstance like this. We're going to continue advocating for what's right in the public schools in the city of Chicago. At City Hall, Anthony Ponce, Fox 32 news. Illinois becomes the next state to legalize marijuana. In June, Governor J.B. Pritzker signed it into law. It allows the sale of recreational marijuana to people 21 and older. People will be able to buy up to 30 grams of cannabis. The law is somewhat controversial as many cities, especially those in the suburbs, including Naperville and Libertyville, have chosen to opt out of selling marijuana. A journalism icon calls it a career. Our very own Larry Yellen set aside the microphone after decades in the business, ending a career of storytelling to focus on his own. Thank you. And by the way, it's good having you here. Nice to be I'm here. Really glad to have you. Nice to be here. Larry Yellen made his first on air appearance with Fox 32 in January of 1994, but his journalism career began long before that. The Waukegan native graduated from Northwestern Law School, where he met his wife, Sue. He then spent time working in Michigan and Washington, D.C., before coming back to Chicago, where he spent 11 years with ABC7. One moment, while doing undercover work, he was mistaken for a drug dealer by DEA agents. Hands are up. Come on, come on up. Hands are up. Now, let's go. Today, today, underground. At Fox 32, one of Larry's first investigations revealed how many kids were getting burned by fast food chains, leading to nationwide changes. Effective today, we are removing hot chocolate for the time being in all Wendy's across the United States. Another of his investigations led to the recall of more than a million minivans. Larry was also one of the few legal analysts to predict O.J. Simpson's acquittal. What do I think? Yeah. I tell you, I think he's going to be acquitted, and I'll give you the details when we come right back. I think he's going to be found guilty. He reported on the arrests of Illinois Governors George Ryan and Rod Blagojevich and had one of his most infamous on-air moments when he hit the wall. I really thought I was going to get the big scoop, and I'm walking, and I'm talking, and all of a sudden, I hit the wall. You got it. I, I feel the pain when I see it again. I haven't seen it in a while. Do you do? Let's see that again in slow mo. Oh. I want to see that again. Walking. Oh. In 2010, Larry started anchoring the weekend newscasts here at Fox 32, eventually getting rid of his fashionable mustache. And now, rather than talking about fish... I like fly fishing movies. <laughs> River runs through it, uh, a couple others like it. Yeah. Larry's planning to be out on the water...
catching them. Next in our year in review, it's the sound Bears fans can't get out of their heads. Oh man, the heartbreaking double doink that sidelined the Bears' promising season. Plus, everybody's got different blessings. Uh, this is my blessing. An heroic rescue in Chicago's Humboldt Park, a Florida man's innovative solution to catch a gator on the loose, and his rise to fame in the process. Happy Holidays from Fox 32 Chicago. A jaw-dropping moment ends the Chicago Bears season. And only oh, hits the upright again. That's impossible. Hard to watch again. The team's Super Bowl dreams coming down to that one kick that just could not make it through. The Bears were facing off against the Eagles in the final seconds of the January playoff game when Cody Parkey attempted to kick the field goal. It clanked off the goalpost, hit the crossbar before bouncing back into the field. A devastating end to an otherwise terrific season for the Bears. And finally, the story that had everyone's eyes on a Humboldt Park Lagoon, an exotic discovery lurking beneath the waters. <laughs> Talking about Chance the Snapper, evading capture until alligator expert Frank Robb came to the rescue armed with a fishing pole. Dane Placco has a story about the gator that charmed Chicago. Just five feet long and maybe 40 pounds, Chance the Snapper finally meets his adoring public at the Humboldt Park Boathouse. Yeah, he was cute, though he is vicious, but I'm glad they caught him. And this is the man who did it. It went exactly as we planned. You couldn't, we couldn't have hoped for anything more. The city hired Florida gator wrangler Frank Robb after days of growing crowds and failed attempts to catch the alligator. Robb asked police to clear Humboldt Park, then snag Chance with this hook on a fishing pole about 20 feet from shore. When we first saw him, he went down for a minute, then he uh, vocalized, he popped back up in one cast, and it was a done deal. What is vocalized? Uh, just kind of speaking a little bit of crocodilian. Can you do it for us? That's a trade secret, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what's next for Chance? Rest assured, it will be going to um, either a zoo or a sanctuary. No harm will come to this gator. Fans hoping he stays in the Chicago area. She's kind of an alligator fan these days, so we decided to come down and check it out. And if something feels familiar about this story, remember Jaws? He's got under the boat. I think he's got under the boat. We found our Quint. He bagged the gator in what 12 hours and uh, we owe a deep uh, debt of gratitude to uh, Frank Robb and he didn't get eaten and he didn't get eaten everybody's got different blessings uh, this is my blessing see you later alligator in Humboldt Park Dane Placco Fox 32 News and what a story it was. Oh, it was. And that ends our 2019 year in review. I'm Corey McFerrin. And I'm Dawn Hasbrook. Thank you for joining us and happy holidays. <laughs>